Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we talk about all things Tufoglaena. To be more precise, we showcase you three different species of Tufoglaena. Tufoglaena costae will be the most colorful one for sure. My name is Martin, I'm with Birds by the CH and we take you on a journey to show you the most colorful tarantula which is out there. For well over 150 years, the species Tufoglaena celadonia was known to science and tarantula enthusiasts around the globe know about this species for all the last 20 to 30 years. With the revision of the genus in 2012 by Brazilian researchers, other members of these dwarf tarantulas got described and these other species were not less colorful at all. The currently most beautiful tarantula of this genus is potentially Tufoglaena costae. But who I am to decide, leave a comment down below and let us know which Tufoglaena you like the best. So covering a bit of history to the species regarding T. celadonia, you can watch all of the other videos we have on our channel. We just created a special Tufoglaena playlist to provide you with all the information we have available. Now Tufoglaena costae is named after Miriam Costae, who collected the type and holotype material of this and several other new spiders during several years she worked at the Instituto Butantan in Brazil. Interestingly, the female specimen was found during a rescue mission in 2002. That's 19 years ago. Additional specimens were found in the same year in a pitfall trap and an immature specimen in 2010 near the border of two states in Brazil. Now if you combine these facts together, nothing was known about the lifestyle of T. costae back then. All three specimens the researcher found were more of an accident. This shows also in the natural history section of the scientific publication in 2012 when this species got described. Three states are mentioned as potential distribution zones. Tocantins, Maranho, and Pichawi, but no more information was available present at this date. The open vegetation zone called Cerrado is more of a savanna type like habitat in Brazil. Present in this region are for example Iridopelma marcoi, Iridopelma vanini and of course Tifoglaena costae. The Restinga and Katinga regions have quite drastic climate with rocky formations and water stress present most of the times during the year with extremely high temperatures during the day and quite low temperatures during the night. So with these few sparse trees in between it's quite a habitat for arboreal tarantulas. So it's amazing to think that these regions inhabit so many different arboreal tarantulas. Just think about the US with all these different terrestrial and fossorial Alphonopelma species. With so many trees present, one could imagine having an arboreal tarantula living there when seeing these sparse habitats in Brazil. Now just a short reminder that most of you who watch our videos are not subscribed. In case you're interested in these videos and other field trip videos you should activate the bell and get notified because we don't upload regular content on a weekly basis but when we do it's most of the time a very well crafted video and certainly worth watching it if you're a tarantula enthusiast. The area of T. costae is considered a transition ecozone between the Cerrado Savanna and the Amazon rainforest called Mato Grosso Seasonal Forest. It is characterized by mosaic forest with higher trees large in diameter, well above 5 meters in height. Now having a look at a field research study conducted by Andrew in 2017 regarding Tifoglaena costae, the field research within 16 days of time, they found a total of 19 specimens of Tifoglaena costae were found and documented. Now this concludes that once aware of the lifestyle of the species and the preferred trees in the ecoregion, specimens can be found very successful. Out of these 19 specimens, 16 of them were adult females, of which 9 adult females were found alongside with their offspring. Between 3 and 9 spiderlings living together with the mother spider in its retreat. So at this point, I really suggest you to download this and other research articles regarding Tifoglaena, they are all linked in the description of this video. Along with all the deforestation happening around the world and also in the habitat of Tifoglaena costae, the tarantula species is considerably lucky. The host tree the tarantula occupies is the famous and locally protected 
Pequi tree. Due to its protection state, the tree will most of the time be respected and not locked, creating little patches of remaining forest where Tifolena castae can live a happy life. Stopping deforestation will certainly help the population of Tifoglena costae the most. So if you reassess all the numbers and facts provided through these scientific publications from 2012 to 2020, one comes clear. The pet trade, demand and illegal extraction is not the main issue at all for the survival of this species. Brazil and its local laws to fight biopiracy is quite famous and tarantula smugglers from Southeast Asia or Europe don't take the risk on that. Of course, that's just an assumption and nothing scientifically worked out. But giving a personal comment, we should see hundreds of Tifoglena Costa in every collector's home by now when there really are poachers out there focusing on colorful tarantulas like this T. Costae here. Certainly the threat is very limited and every hour forests on other zones of natural importance get destroyed with thousands of plants and animal species destroyed. So you may be asking yourself why I bring this topic up while showcasing this beautiful tarantula species. Well, last year in a scientific publication formally describing the male specimen of Tufaglena coromim, the researchers voted for an inclusion of the whole genus Tifaglaena into the CITES Appendix 1 list. Now, the Appendix 1 list of CITES prohibits any commercial trade. Now, on the list are, for example, red pandas, panthers, tigers, whales and dolphins. Now, field research to assess population density and viability are crucial to conduct such as done as in the cited publication of Andrew 2020 before putting a species on an extinction list. This should be done, but especially with spiders it appears not to be done in all cases. Like recent example would be the inclusion of Petiloteria on the endangered species list in the US and in addition to the CITES Appendix 2, even though they don't provide any information about local population health or field research assessing the wild population of the spiders in India. We're getting way too deep into politics now, but my aim is to read yourself into the topic and build up your own mind and get involved. Protect these species in the wild, donate money to conservation funds protecting their habitat and do not buy wild-caught animals. Let's hope for more field work and publications determining healthy populations and the creation of protected zones so that the species status of members of the genus Tifoglaena do not get into the red zone or species and extinction list. I think no one wants these animals to go extinct and vanish from the planet. And maybe you're asking yourself why we are putting so much effort in filming these tarantulas in the best possible way. Well, the reason is simple, so you can admire them from a distance, be aware about their existence, learn about their habitat and its need for protection and conservation, and raise awareness that all of us who keep these exotic spiders as pets need to take responsibility and take action. I cannot recommend keeping these tarantulas or buying them. It's great to see people breeding these fragile creatures of the genus Tifoglaena in large numbers very successfully, but this should be done by tarantula enthusiasts who are longer in the hobby and ideally collaborate with governments and professional researchers. Now thank you guys so much for watching. This was the first introduction of Tufoglena Costae on this very channel. If you'd like to see more about Tufoglena Costae and maybe other members of the genus Tufoglena or other spiders in general, make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below like the video and share it with friends. That's for it. I hope to see you guys soon again in the near future, ideally within a field trip video showcasing you some wild tarantulas somewhere on the planet. Thank you and see you soon. And an important disclaimer, we did not buy any Tifoglaena. We visited friends who have them in their collection and are breeding them very successfully. So this whole video was filmed with specimens who do not belong into our collection.